Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, an introduction to SerenianTax.com. This new site is going to eventually replace Serenian Source Tax Online. Our goal with this presentation is to provide you with assistance in explaining the new Serenian Tax module. I am Sandra Clemency, the payroll manager here at the Central Administrative Office. My staff and I, Kathy Mirzinski and Cindy Delacroix, will be presenting today. Some of you may have already received notification from Ceridian that your source tax online account has already been migrated to Ceridian tax. Please note that your source tax online account will continue to remain open for now in order to allow you time to get acquainted with the new Ceridian tax website. All the same information that was in source tax online, except for the wage attachments mod module has been migrated and is now available to you in Ceridian Tax. In this presentation, we will be covering what Identity and Access Management, or IAM is, how to log into IAM as a first time user, how to access reports and view your quarterly tax statement images, how to use Ceridian Payment Solutions self-service tools, and lastly, a note on the garnishment disbursement module. Before we get into the details of how Ceridian Tax works, I would like to give you an overview summary of the site and the three applications involved in using it. The first application is Identity and Access Management, or IAM. IAM allows you access to one or more Ceridian products without having to separately log into each one. Once you're logged into IAM, you will have access to the second application, which is Ceridian Tax Site. This is where you will go to submit requests for payment solutions, view inquiries and amendment details, respond to and resolve periodic tax code fallout notifications. The third application, which is Data as a Service, or DOS, is where you'll go to run and export reports for tax account and funding information and access, view, and print your quarterly tax statements. Cindy will now go over Identity and Access Management, or IAM, and how to log in as a first-time user. Some of you may remember IAM from processing payroll using the Ceridian HPL system. We used IAM to access HPL's Ceridian trial payroll and access our final payroll reports. Now IAM is being used to access Ceridian tax. In the next week, Ceridian will be activating your user accounts in IAM. Please be on the lookout for this welcome email from IAM support at ceridian.com. Even if you had an account previously in IAM, you will still receive this welcome email. The email contains login credentials and a link to the IAM website. If you do not receive this email by the end of the week and have confirmed that it is, has not gone into your junk or spam folder, please let us know and we will send you another welcome email. To get to the IAM login page, click on the link or URL from your welcome email. The login page will open. Click on first time user. Enter the user ID from your welcome email and click submit. You will receive an email confirmation. This confirmation email will contain your security code. You need the security code to complete your user setup. Key the security code and click Submit. You will then be asked to create a new password. Confirm the password, then click Save and Proceed. Your next step will be to set up your secret questions. Select five questions from the drop-down menu and key the answers into the fields next, fields next uh, on the right side. Click Save and Proceed. A notification informing you that your account was successfully set up will appear. Click OK. You will then be redirected to the login page. Key your user ID and password. Click Sign In. Now you will be asked to set up your multi-factor authentication. This is a required step and must be set up. There are two options you can choose from when setting this up. Smartphone app is one, and text message or voice call is the second. In this presentation, we will demonstrate the smartphone app option, but both are available in the IAM Getting Started documentation, which can be found on Venergy. Select the smartphone app and click Next. For these next few steps, we will be going back and forth from our computer to our phone. 
Step one, on the computer, you will be asked to set up contact information. Select USA slash Canada from the primary phone number dropdown list. Key your phone number. Make sure the phone number is that of your smartphone. Click next. Step two, on the phone, install the Twilio Audi app by downloading from your Apple or Google Play Store. Step three, on your computer. You will be asked to verify your, your phone number by selecting for a verification code to be sent by either text message or a voice call. In this demonstration, we chose text message. Step four, back on the phone. Uh, the image in the middle is the text message we received. Step five, on the computer, key the verification code and click next. Step six, you will now need to set up your app on your smartphone. You will be asked to key your phone number, then click OK. Then a field to enter your email will appear. Key your email address and click OK. Step seven, on the app, a code referred to as a Ceridian token will appear. You must quickly key the code into your computer and click next. Keep in mind that the Ceridian token expires in 20 seconds. If the token expires, a new one will generate and you may try again. The eighth and last step on your computer, you will receive a message advising that the multi-factor authentication process has been completed. Click continue and you will now be logged into IAM. Since you have set up the Audi app and verified your phone number, future logins will be easier. When logging into IAM, DOS, or Ceridian Tax in the future, you will receive an approved login message as seen in the first image. An alert message is sent to the app on your phone. On your phone, select Approve as seen in the second image. You will then be logged into IAM. Please note that there may be a slight delay between clicking Approve and the IAM homepage opening. If you go 76 days without logging into your account, you will receive an email notification from IAM support at Ceridian.com advising you that you have 14 days to log into your account before the account is deactivated. All accounts are automatically deactivated after 90 days of inactivity. Now that we are logged into the IAM homepage, let's take a look and review some of the key tasks that can be completed from the landing page. The IAM homepage displays icons that link to the Ceridian Tax and DOS application. Ceridian Tax is where you will access tax account information and payment solution self-service. DOS is where you will retrieve your tax statement images and other tax and funding reports. Each application has an independent URL and will open in a separate tab on your browser. Once you have completed your IAM first time user setup, you can choose to bypass IAM and log in directly to either the ceridiantax.com or dos.ceridian.com websites. Sandra now is going to talk about Ceridian Tax homepage. We will now review the key tasks that can be accessed from the Ceridian Tax modules homepage, which will help you manage your location's tax account. From the drop down hamburger menu on Ceridian Taxes homepage, you will see two primary options. Clicking on the first menu option, My Reports and Images, will launch DOS portal into a new browser. DOS is where you will view tab, a tax account setup information and search for tax filing and funding activity and obtain copies of your quarterly tax returns. The DOS portal can also be accessed directly from the IAM homepage. The second menu option is tax and payment solutions. There are two sub menu options. The first option is payment solution services, which is where you will go to submit requests for check and direct deposit stops and reversals. The second option is tax service. This is where you will be able to view tax return amendment information, submit tax agency inquiry notices, or submit responses to Ceridian periodic tax code fallout notices.
Kathy will now talk to you some more about my reports and images or DAS portal. When you are on the Ceridian Tax homepage, click on the hamburger drop down menu and click on my reports and images. A new browser tab opens to the Ceridian DOS website. The landing or homepage for DOS provides you with two options, my reports or tax images. Let's look at my reports first. There are three categories to choose from in my reports, annual, periodic, or quarterly. Each category has multiple reports you can run. We will not be going over every report in each category in this webinar, but I encourage you to review each report on your own to see if any of them may be of use to you. Each report has a search box to allow you to search for your company. If the search box doesn't load, make sure your pop-up blocker on your web browser is turned off. You can search by client ID, company name, as filed with the IRS or FEIN. However, the easiest search method is just to add an asterisk under the search value for the client ID. Then click outside the field and the client ID dropdown list loads with the list of all the companies you have access to. Also, please note that the help icon is always available to you if you would like to learn more about a specific feature or functionality. Now let's take a look at how to view one of the periodic reports. It's important to run the client profile report at the very least once a year. This report provides key customer information that includes legal and mailing addresses, contact details, and banking information. It also includes tax jurisdiction information that is tied to your account. This report is important to review as it reflects your tax account information that Ceridian uses to make your tax deposits and file your returns. After entering your search criteria, click on View Report to display your company's account details. Click on the bottom scroll bar to scroll right to view additional company profile details or to go to the next page to view a list of your tax jurisdictions. Here is an example of the tax jurisdiction information from your master file. This report contains your tax service codes and descriptions. Each code must have an assigned tax ID and deposit frequency. The information can be exported by using the icon towards the top of the page. Another helpful report is the funding activity report. This report can be used to review funding for a specific date range. This can be helpful in identifying or validating credit or debit supply to your bank account. It can also assist you in tracking down unusual activities such as quarter end withdrawals or return direct deposit amounts. This is a sample of the funding report. It provides you the check date and draft amounts as well as other fields. Remember, the liability and funding amounts should match the total seen at the end of your payroll summary report. Let's take a quick look at the quarterly and annual reports. Under the quarterly reports, you will see the option for federal, state, and local statements. These reports provide a line-by-line -line breakdown of data reported on each quarterly return, as well as deposits paid throughout the quarter. Again, you will need to search by client ID by entering the asterisk and clicking in an area outside the field, which will load the customer ID field. Then choose a tax period and click view report. The quarterly report for federal contains both the tax filing summary and the tax deposit summary. The tax filing summary is a recap of information reported in the 941 return. Click the arrow to view the deposit summary. The tax deposit summary is a recap of all deposits made on your behalf throughout the quarter. Under the annual reports menu, there are similar reports for all year-end returns. The tax filing summary is a recap of your year-to-date wage and tax amounts. The tax deposit summary shows a recap of all deposits made on your behalf throughout the year by Ceridian Tax. Similar summaries are provided for all tax jurisdictions contained in your tax code master file. 
Now let's take a look at the tax images in DAS. When we go back to the home page in DAS, we can click on the tax images icon so we can get PDF images of our tax returns. Select the company you want to see tax images for and click the arrow to move to the selected box. Choose tax statements from the drop down list, then select the quarter or quarters you want to see then click the arrow to move to the selected box. Click the search button. Select the tax statement from the search results. You have the option to preview the, preview the image or download the image. Now Sandra will discuss Ceridian taxes, inquiry and amendment details. From the drop down menu, first let's look at the self service tools under tax services menu. Under tax services, you can view the status of your amended returns, submit agency inquiries, and submit periodic tax code fallout responses. Under the amendments option is where you'll go to review any notes or attachments related to any requests for amended returns. To submit an inquiry or agency notice for review or resolution by Ceridian tax team, search for this and select your company, then choose the submit an inquiry icon, enter all details, and then upload the document for processing. Please note, if you would prefer to continue to have payroll support, submit any inquiries on your behalf, we are certainly happy to continue to do so. Another self-service tool available under the tax services menu is the ability to answer or resolve any of Ceridian tax code fallout notifications. A tax code fallout occurs when information is transmitted for a tax jurisdiction that is not set, set up or is not active on your tax code profile in Ceridian tax. These notifications must be resolved quickly to avoid late payment and or filing penalties and additional Ceridian fees. Contained in the tax code fallout notification is the effective tax type, amount reported, and the current status of the fallout. Again, we are currently assisting you in answering these notifications and will continue to do so if you would prefer. Just send any tax code fallout notifications from Serenian Tax to payment to payroll support promptly uh, so we can address the issues in a timely manner for you. Now let's uh, look at what you can do under Payment Solutions menu option from Ceridian Tax's homepage. Just as you could in Source Tax Online, you will continue to have the option to submit requests to Ceridian Payment Solutions through the ceridiantax.com site. From the Payment Solutions Services drop down menu, you can submit a number of self service requests for items such as requesting copies of canceled checks requesting stop payments or requesting an update to an email address for those who should be receiving the important payment solution notifications. To make any of Ceridian Payment Solutions requests, just complete the online form. By, by first choosing your location, make sure you choose the company ending in 002, as this is the company related to Dayforce. The company ending in dash 001 is related to past payrolls that were processed in our legacy HPL system. Second, choose your request type. And third, enter the check information and submit. Please note that you can continue to submit your stop payments, void checks, or direct deposit reversal requests using payment solutions paper forms and submitting them directly by fax or email to Ceridian. These paper forms can still be found on Energy. It is not necessary to involve payroll support in requesting stop payments or direct deposit reversals uh, from Ceridian Payment Solutions. However, please do contact payroll support if you should need assistance with this process. Use the update email address page to request any changes to your location's contacts for Ceridian Payment Solutions. In the search criteria section, enter a full or partial client ID, PSID, FEIN, or company name, and click search. In the search results section, click on the company name. On the update email address change form page, you can do the following. To add a new contact email address, in the add email details section, enter their email address and click add. 
If you need to delete an existing contact email address, go to the delete email details section, enter the email address and click add. Changing an existing email uh, contact email address will take two steps. First is the add email details section, enter the new email address and click add. Then go to the delete email details section, enter the old email address and click add, then click submit. As mentioned earlier, the garnishment module in Source Text Online has not been converted to SeridianTax.com yet. For those of you with current access to the garnishment and disbursements module in Source Text Online, we're told at some point in the near future, this feature will become available to you in Serene Tax. For now, however, you will continue to access Source Text Online to see your garnishment and disbursement information. This concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, please submit them to payroll support. In addition, please look for additional documentation on Venergy under the Day Force Payroll section. Thank you.